want you to know I like you, and uh, I want you to know where I'm at in my life. And, I, and then I just casually said, you know, I'm bald, and I'm breastless, I'm going through cancer, I'm, I'm divorced, and I have three kids, and um, you know, I, I'm just curious if that's a deal breaker. Is that a deal breaker? And so there was this, <laughs> you could see, so it was a sushi bar, so I, I just, me and the people were like this, and so I'm like, inside, I'm like, oh yeah, I did it, and I'm willing to love and accept myself anyway. And so I'm sitting there, and I remember seeing the peripheral vision, you know, he's chewing his food, and he just, this slow turn. I could tell he's surveying the wig. You know, he's kind of shaking his head, and he wipes his mouth, and He's just kind of shaking his head. I'm like, all righty now. Any response? And so he, he said, you know, and he goes, that's a sweet looking wig. And then he said, that's all right. He goes, I'm a leg and butt man. No worries. And so I got him, I literally got him a second date in a lifetime of love. I married him uh, almost three years ago. In October on the, uh, the uh, walk, Coleman, Susan G. Coleman walk, uh, I, I married him. So. <laughs> These are opportunities to practice, and I want to give you that word practice. Practice. Use that word practice. Practice has built-in grace. Practice has built-in grace. I'm practicing. I work with a lot of businessmen and women, and there's, there's fear over presentations. There's fear over travel. There's, there's fear over uh, whether or not they'll meet their quota. All of those things. So this is just practice. Practice. You are practicing building confidence. You are practicing transparency. You're practicing loving and accepting yourself, even if you do get everything done or you don't. This is practice. Now, when you fall or stumble or have a setback or become unconscious and fall asleep at the gate and at the end of the day you're overwhelmed because you weren't alert at the thoughts coming out, so you started to label them as a threat, you begin again. The most wonderful thing is to begin again. You can begin again a hundred times a day. And you did this, or I saw you all walk in here. So you obviously know what this process is like, or you'd still be crawling. You would have been crawling in here, because after the first time you said, forget it. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not falling anymore. How many times have we done that in our life? Something happens, you get slapped, someone doesn't approve of you, someone doesn't call you back, you don't reach your quota, you, somebody gets promoted, forget it. Forget it, sense of entitlement. It will keep you stuck by the closed doors in life. I deserve better. Why? Why do you deserve better? I'm, I'm curious. What's the programming underneath that? Why do you feel like you deserve better? Because it's very interesting talking to people around the world and what they feel they need in order to feel that they've made it. So where did you get your programming from? How free, how free the experience of being a human being when you do remember, you're enough. You've all been gifted with different gifts and talents. I've been gifted with gifts and talents. There's no comparison. I'm a, I'm a gardener. I love, I love gardening. And, and I just planted 18 lily bulbs. And I saw one of them just piercing through the, the uh, chips yesterday. So I got my camera and I ran out to the break. And I took a picture of it. And I put it on my Facebook. And I said, wow. Look at this divine intelligence. I sunk this bulb six inches into the dark, cold, and it was granule, and we got clay in Colorado. You know, you got to really work it to get something in Colorado. Whereas back in New York, you drop it, and in a week, you have a tree. And so as, it's, as, as I'm looking at this, I said, look at this divine wisdom. In spite of the elements, in spite of the dark, how the heck does this bulb know that its purpose, its God-given natural state of being, is to bloom? How does it know that? Seriously. I've been, I've been <laughs> contemplating it this week when I saw this little thing shoot through the chips. I, said, I, I, I called my husband. I called my kids. I said, look at that. <laughs> look at that. And they're like, what? <laughs> that. That is an invitation of remembrance of what is woven within our beings. We are created. Our God-given natural state of being is to bloom. Bloom. Whether you're bald, whether you're breastless, whether you have a job, whether you don't, whatever the situation is, our natural state of being is to bloom, to connect, to love, 
These are the things that you reflect on as you gaze into the sunset of this life. And everybody that's been made aware of how short this life is, particularly going through the experience of cancer, as you remember what you value most in life, and you align yourself on a daily basis, I encourage each of you, sometime this week, 10 things you value most. Put it someplace where you can see it and reference it. The stress comes in when you are not aligned in your day with what you value most. You know this to be true because you'll have the anxiety. A human being will come in your presence, want to share something, want to talk, your child, whatever it is, and all of a sudden the stress starts coming up. Listen to it. It's an invitation to realign. Oh, that's right. I value people above things. I have a little statement. People before things. I learned this from Leo Buscaglia when I was 16 years old. People before things. Do I always follow that? Heck no. I do not. And it's my intention to begin again when I don't. Begin again. Realign. Step into what you value most. Know that when you are anxious, ask yourself the question, where am I disaligned and not congruent with what I value most here? And perhaps it's simply in remembering you're enough with or without this desired outcome or what you desire to accomplish. <coughs> oh, oh, that's right. I am enough. That's okay. That's enough. And so as I was reading with my son after I lost my hair, the, who has heard of the book, uh, The Velveteen Rabbit? Yes. By Marjorie Williams, I believe. The part where the skin horse is talking to the rabbit, these two toys, and this, the, uh, the, the, I believe it was the rabbit that asked the skin horse. So when do you know when you're real? When do you know when you're real? When do you know when you're real? That's a good question. Right? And uh, because it's then you know you're loved. And so I'm reading this section to my son, and he puts his little 10 year old hand down on the page. And he said, Mom, you're the rabbit. You're the rabbit. You're both. You've been loved so much. This is what my son said. And it's in my first book, Hearing His Whisper. I could not believe it was coming out. God was just barring his mouth to remind me of the essential truths that I was forgetting at that time. You are loved. You are loved. I encourage you to not shrink back from challenges in your life. Because it is through those challenges that the doors of opportunity for growth open up. I don't know why it's like that. I haven't fully figured it out. I have some ideas. And I encourage you not to shrink back from the trials, the tribulations, the perceived challenges whatever they seem to be in your life. Because through those challenges, you will be given an invitation back to your greatest potential. To know that you're enough. To realign. To become congruent once again, so that you can start to play more. So that you can laugh. You can lighten up. And you can remember that all things are possible for those who believe. No matter what. No matter what surrounds you. So, I, I, am, I, am I pretty good with time? Yeah. I'm done, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so what I'd, like to, what I'd like to do is I'd like to encourage you guys. Some of you, um, I'll pass out the handouts. Um, some of you didn't get the handouts. I actually have a sheet of paper. I have three different opportunities for growth. One of them is the one-on-one -on -one coaching. I offer four, six, eight week programs. The other one is Stress Solutions University. As I mentioned to you, we're doing bi-monthly hot seat coaching calls. Compliments of Stress Solutions University. I'm